In this video we're going to apply the things we learned by doing a VOR approach. Now we're not going to go into all the details of how to fly this kind of approach. That'll be done later in another video. But the El Nido VOR is where we're headed. We're coming from the north and we'll make a left turn to, to the 109 radio which is the reciprocal of the 289 inbound heading that we'll uh, fly. And what you do in this kind of approach is you uh, come down across the VOR, make what's called a procedure turn, and come back around and intercept the same radio you flew out on. So here we are headed for the El Nido VOR. We're going to apply the usual rules of uh, when to turn based on how fast we are and how high above the VOR we're going to be. We're going to descend to 3,000 feet and make a left turn of relatively modest left turn of about 40 or 45 degrees. From there we'll fly outbound on the 109 radio for about four and a half miles, make our procedure turn, then again intercept the 109 radio, overfly the El Nido VOR and finish our approach. So again coming from the north, left turn out, procedure turn, re-intercept the 109 radio on a heading of 289 degrees and overfly the VOR. So here we are almost set up. We're at 3,000 feet, slowing down just a bit. You want to be under 200 knots. Typically I fly these at between 170 and 180 knots initially. And we are about 10 miles away and just slightly to the left course. So we'll nudge it over a little bit, fly into the needle or into the split portion of the needle. And because this could be considered the initial portion of our approach, we can start setting up our aircraft as we would uh, for any other approach. So we'll, we'll set our flaps and slats at 8 degrees and keep ourselves on course inbound to the El Nido VOR. So at this speed, about 180 knots, and using the rule of thumb one-third mile uh, for every 60 knots of ground speed, gives us one mile. We add the extra half mile for a little margin, a mile and a half. But since we're only turning about a half a turn, uh, 45 degrees, we'll cut that in half. So that gives us about three quarters of a mile. In addition, we'll be overflying the, uh, the VOR at about a half a mile high. So you add that, which means we should start our turn at about a mile and a quarter. But again, just to add a little bit of margin, we'll start our turn just inside a mile and a half DME. So keeping ourselves on course to the VOR, watching the uh, DME distance, and preparing to make our turn. Just to give you a quick look of where we are with respect to the El Nido VOR on the map, you can see that we're getting now uh, under 2 uh, DME away from the VOR. So we need to get ourselves set up to fly outbound on the 109 degree radial. Turn our cursor to that, wait until we drop just below 1.5 nautical miles, and make our start making our turn. As we fly past the El Nido VOR, you'll see the little triangle that's pointing forward. The two indicator switch to from. Now pointing backwards or pointing downwards, indicating we've flown past the uh, VOR. And as before, when we're close to a, a VOR station, we want to intercept at a relatively shallow angle because things do happen quickly when you're close. So we'll keep our intersect angle at about 10 degrees and watch for the split portion of the needle to move. When it does, we simply turn gradually into our desired course until the needle aligns. And now we're on the outbound portion of the VOR approach and we've applied the principles of turning at a VOR and intercepting a desired radio, in this case the 109 radial of the El Nido VOR. We'll stay on this course for about four and a half nautical miles 
before we start our procedure turn to the left. Make small corrections as needed to keep the needle in the middle until we uh, reach our point where we're going to turn, in this case a left turn, into our procedure turn. At four and a half DME out, we'll make our left turn to start our procedure turn. Again, we won't get into the details of how this is done. That'll be covered in a separate video. Uh, but now we're uh, we're headed out on our uh, outbound portion of our procedure turn, and at this point we can disregard any information we're getting from the VOR, but we can turn the cursor to the inbound heading 289 degrees, so we're ready to intercept the 109 degree radial on the inbound leg back to the El Nido VOR. And during this time we'll want to descend to our target altitude of 2200 feet. So back in the aircraft and we've already started our uh, procedure turn. This is a 180 degree turn at the end of which you'll set up at an angle to the inbound radial. The procedure turn for most VOR approaches has you intercepting the inbound radial at somewhere between 30 and about 45 degrees. This particular one is a fairly steep one at 45 degrees as you can see. But we'll have plenty of time to make the turn and I have a little trick that I use. I time my outbound leg for 36 seconds once I've made the turn. And what that does is when I make my inbound turn, when I reach the intercept angle, I'll be at or very near the point when the needle segment starts to move. And here I am almost at that angle and you can see that the needle is starting to move. And we inter intercept the inbound leg in the same manner as we intercept any VOR radial. Keep it at a bit of an angle flying into the split part of the needle. We're a ways out so we could have had a, a little bit bigger angle than this but we'll hold it here. It'll drift on in very gently. So here's what we did. We flew out, did a procedure turn, and now we're about to intercept the inbound portion and fly over the El Nido VOR. During this time things get pretty busy. We're configuring for landing. We are in the initial phases of our final approach. So we're setting flaps, uh, getting ready to lower gear, and keeping uh, ourselves on course. I'm going to nudge over just a little bit. So we're uh, centering the needle. And uh, we're holding 2200 feet or higher until we cross the El Nido VOR as is uh, dictated by the approach, at which point we'll then begin our descent. Also notice that we're at a slight angle. Uh, we're, we'll be coming in at a slight angle. This is fairly characteristic of many VOR approaches. They don't line you up perfectly with the runway. So again, we'll keep uh, the needle centered and fly to the El Nido VOR. And we'll know uh, the signs of uh, getting close. When we get to the cone of confusion, things start to get a little bit erratic. And we'll watch for that. And we'll do a little needle chasing here just to demonstrate that but in reality your best bet is often just to hold the heading if you've established well you correct it for winds and whatever you, you uh, keep the plane on the same heading when you come out the other side you can make small adjustments here you can see the needle drifting a bit to the right we'll move a little to the right but we're going to expect it's going to swing back to the left pretty quickly here because we are near the cone of confusion Soon we'll be expecting to overfly the VOR. We'll know that we have when the needle swings wide to one side or the other, goes off and then comes back on again. And the to from indicator switches from to to from. Here we are, we're very close. There's the big needle swing now to the left. And things will go blank. And when it comes back alive again, the to from indicator will now be pointing down. 
So it looks like we're pretty far off course here, but in reality, we're still at the edge of the cone of confusion. We can move over slightly to the left, but only a small amount because we're very close. And as the signal comes back, you'll notice that the needle begins to center again. We didn't really need to make much of a heading change at all. Small adjustments, and you will get distracted uh, doing other things, lowering flaps, lowering gear, setting up for your descent which we started as we passed over the El Nido VOR as per the uh, approach plate. So we'll move over a little bit to the left again to center the needle. Continue our descent. At this airspeed our descent rate is about 800 feet per minute. This is another skill in uh, flying this type of approach. You don't have a glide slope to follow. If you look out uh, the windscreen you can just barely see the runway right now. So we'll hold on course until we get a little bit better look uh, at the runway. And as it comes into view you can see that we'll need to make a bit of an adjustment coming in at an angle. So we'll make a gentle turn to the right and since we have visual reference with the runway we can now disregard the information from the VOR. Continue our descent and a bit of a turn to line up with the runway and we'll be down in just a minute. Again this is fairly characteristic of many non-precision approaches because usually the NAV facility is not lined up perfectly as it would be with an ILS or localizer approach. And a quick look at that beautiful Elite Premier paint on the CRJ-700 regional jet as we line up and settle down for landing. And we can take a look at what we did on Plan G. This is actually a saved version. Plan G automatically saves your uh, flight plans and the breadcrumb trail. You can see we came from the north-northwest, overflew the El Nido VOR, flew outbound, the procedure turn, and then back inbound, holding the prescribed heading until we had a good visual reference of the runway. And then we moved over a little bit, lined up with the runway, and finished the landing. As an alternative, had we been coming from the south, you can see we could overfly the El Nido VOR and uh, fly outbound, turn back around. This uh, was about five miles out, intercepting the 289 radial inbound at 109 degrees heading, crossing the VOR and uh, flying outbound on the 109 heading, flying the procedure turn back in just like you saw. And once we have uh, well-established visual contact with the runway, we can move over and finish the landing. So pay us a visit at ElitePremierVirtual.com. Our website has uh, some good stuff you might uh, find helpful. Our useful links will get you to things like Sky Vector, uh, Plan G, Fuel Planner, and so on. And we also have a learning center where you'll find several written documents that you can uh, read and use for reference. And we also have a link to our YouTube site. Some information on the ATC communication basics, IFR flight planning, and how to read approach plates, along with the uh, VOR navigation, uh, NDB navigation using the ADF, and some information on flying non-precision approaches.